everybody. My name is Karen Kag, and this is Shanley Denog. <laughs> and we are here to sing to you about Reiki. No, just kidding. We won't. <laughs> Reiki Thank and the Kamari you. Method. We're really excited to um, present this. Really, this is about the third time, isn't it? The third time that we've presented about the KonMari method. I think so. Yeah, yeah. We we did it once before, just sort of like talking about it a little bit, and then last, yes, because last March, exactly a year ago, I was losing my ever loving mind with the beginning of the pandemic, and you started helping me then. And I said, "This is good stuff. We need to share it." So we did uh, a, a little series about the KonMari method. But now I have. How many hours have I completed? A hundred and something. Over a hundred hours. I hired Shanley finally because, okay, I'm 58 years old and I know I have at least 50 years of mm -hmm. stuff that I have been dragging from place to place to place. Um, oh, I guess that was just last week, wasn't it, Shanley, that I finally opened my dad's suitcase. My dad died 10 years ago yeah. this year, 10 years ago. And I have been dragging a suitcase of his around for 10 years. And so I was terrified. How many places have you moved it? I moved it from his house to my house, mm -hmm. that house to the apartment, the apartment to, yeah, it went through three moves. And I just, I just kept, uh, and that's kind of a metaphor for what, yeah. what Shanley has been helping me with. I have just been carrying my emotional baggage from place to place to place. So what yeah. we want to do in this series is talk a little bit more about the peaceful home aspect of the KonMari. Mm -hmm. um, when when I first thought of KonMari, I thought, you know, I think I'd heard of the spark joy and all of that. But and and I'd been through you know the process with Shanley. She explained you know the five categories, and we'll do that again. But this mm -hmm. time, we really want to focus on the emotional part of the KonMari method and also Reiki. So this mm -hmm. first time, um. I, I, if you don't know about Reiki, Reiki is a Japanese relaxation technique that promotes healing. And Shanley is also a Reiki master. Shanley, tell us your credentials. Oh, okay. I am Shanley Tenak. I am a professional organizer. I'm a member of NAPO, which is the National Association of Productivity and Organizing Professionals. I'm also a KonMari consultant. I'm a, a bronze level. There's five different levels and I'm the second level up right now. And I am a uh, certified personal stylist, so I can help you with your clothes and what looks best on you, what colors look best on you, what shapes look best on you, what looks good on Zoom and what doesn't. Um, and the last thing is I'm a Reiki master. So that's um, levels one, two, and three. And I'm going to be a Karuna soon. Yeah, I love Karuna Reiki. But yeah. um, and but we, as we worked through, uh, I think this is probably the most... I'll just be honest. I think that this is the most intimate relationship I've ever had with anybody, Shanley. And I haven't, oh, that's going to make me cry. Um, not, of course, in like a friendship or, a you know, that kind of a relationship, but just uh, pulling out all your stuff and showing it to somebody and letting somebody get in there and help you deal with your stuff. So it wasn't just my physical stuff. It was all my internal emotional stuff. Um, there was a lot of it. Being vulnerable. Being vulnerable. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, and I told Chanley, I said, I don't think I could do this with anybody but you. Um, and I don't know how many times she said, like, mm, judgment free, do, do your thing. Judgment free. Judgment -free zone. <laughs> yeah. So I know that 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 she can help you. And I know that what we're going to share is probably at least going to give you some ideas. And, and I would say, first of all, before we even start this, if you, if you can take some of these tips and do it, great. Mm -hmm. But if you, like me, I would just look and go like, uh, and it wasn't just the stuff. I thought it was just the stuff. I thought it's too much. It, it wasn't just the stuff. It was all the other stuff inside. So um, hire a professional. I had a friend say, are you sure you have to hire and pay somebody? I'm like, if I could have done this by myself, I would have. I can't. I can't do it. And there's no shame in that. So I hope that this series that we talk about, we're going to do uh, five different five is a magic number for us, five different uh, short talks about the Kamari method and <clears throat> and Reiki. So I think I'd like to start with, if you're not familiar with Reiki, the five principles, I'm looking at myself, the five principles of Reiki. Um, it starts with, and it's, uh, for me, Reiki is a spiritual practice. There it is. Da, da, da. 
<laughs> you got it. Uh, the secret art of inviting happiness. Oh, you know, that's really similar to spark joy, isn't it? The mm -hmm. secret art of inviting happiness is yeah. to yeah, bring your hands together and you say to yourself, chant these words just for today. Do not be angry. Do not worry. Be filled with gratitude. Devote yourself to your work. However you interpret that to, you know, what you interpret that to mean and be kind to every living thing or every every living being that's those are beautiful principles and it's um i mean that that goes across religions cultures i think that that's good for all human beings mm -hmm. um and how does that kind of tie in with the kanmari philosophy as well hand or some people may not know what kanmari is yeah hand in hand it goes like that um and so the idea of of and it's all uh, so Kamari is all about energy the energy of things in your home and keeping things in your home with purpose and that bring you joy and so you, i mean i'm sure you've all seen her with you know the spark joy yay ding <laughs> um and so the idea is is i'm not here to force you to get rid of things i'm here to help you keep things with confidence and i don't i, I that's not that's a completely reframing of a way of thinking about things. Your average declutter challenge is go find 10 things and let them go. That's not what we do in the Kamari method. What we do is we have you hold up this thing, whatever it is, and we say, how is this book serving you? Is it moving you towards your goal? Because that's where we start is your goal. And so if this book is not moving you towards your goal, clearly this book is moving me towards my goal because I use it all the time. Um, but it may not move you towards your goal. And in which case I can't tell you how many times I found this book in a client's home and it hasn't been read number one. And number two, they're not utilizing the principles in that book. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to say thank you and goodbye to that. And the process of saying thank you and goodbye to an item is releasing the energy that is inherently within that item. And that opens up the space for new energy to come in and fill you and, and, and move you towards your goal. So that's how they go hand in hand. Is it's all about energy and moving you towards your goal. Mm -hmm. And I think that the, the goal, that is the foundation. Yeah. And that took a little bit of, of one trust and a little bit of, of <clears throat> well, you've been trying to do this, Shanley, but she helped me frame, like, what exactly is your goal? So I'm 58. I have uh, one child who started college. I took care of both of my parents. They both died. Mm -hmm. And what I found myself in was like in a, an empty nest that was full of stuff I didn't yeah. particularly want. But, but I didn't know how to let go of it. So I just dragged it from place to place. Yeah. <laughs> and so she helped me articulate, one, articulate a goal. You know, like what, Karen, what is your goal? What do you want? And that, that was a hard question to answer. Like, and we uh, actually didn't answer that in the first session. It took a couple of sessions. And this was where active listening comes in on my part. And so the first goal that we actually identified, because you move through the, the categories in, the, in, in order. So first is clothing and then books and then paper and then kimono and then sentimental. And kimono is anything that's not in one of the other categories. That means miscellaneous in Japanese. The idea behind working through them in this order is that you build your choosing muscle, your, your strength, you strengthen your choosing muscle. So clothing is not particularly emotionally sentimental for most people. And for that reason, we're going to start here. We started with clothing with Karen and she had some items that were sentimental, like her, her graduation gown. So then at that point, we just move it over to sentimental and that's okay. That's how you handle that. Your wedding dress goes here. Your mom's shirt, your dad's shirt, it just becomes sentimental. But the idea is, is now you've identified that that is a sentimental item and you're, you know, you're going to deal with it later. And that in itself is part of the choosing muscle. And so the goal here in clothing was to create a travel sized wardrobe because Karen is a huge traveler. And so what she wants to be able to do is have one suitcase full of clothes and and nothing else, pretty much. She wants to be able to only travel with one carry-on suitcase. And so to have, what number of socks? <laughs> I had seven. I had, Oh, my God. I had so many socks. So many. So many socks. As, just um, most pe as do most people. And, and there, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. So what we did was we went through all of her clothes with the goal of having a travel size wardrobe. But I continued to listen. And what I heard, 
eventually when we got to, to category number two by then, because this took six, seven sessions and these are three hour sessions. Okay. These are three hour sessions or more if you're able to handle that, but three hours minimum. And so the idea here is we were into like 20 hours of close by the time I figured out that that was a good goal for, for, for clothing, but the overall goal was actually to be a successful, powerful businesswoman, a strong, successful businesswoman. And so then that started influencing all other choices through the rest of the categories. And that was through the, the process of hearing, listening, and then active uh, response, active, re- you know, replaying, mirroring, mirroring what Karen was saying. And that's but, part of what I've been trained to do. It, to me, it seemed like magic because um, to me, it just seemed like I was like, oh my God. I, and I think you, <laughs> I was just babbling constantly like, oh my God, another one. Oh, ah, oh, what is this? <gasps> I knew I had that somewhere. Um, and so she was watching for, so my face is really, I can never play poker. My face is very expressive, but yeah. she was watching my face and she was listening. And um, so um, when something would really spark joy, I it didn't it. It it. It. <laughs> and I smell everything. I'm yeah. like, oh, uh, look, yeah. my clothes. I mean, it everything. Smells like my dad. It smells like my son. It smells like my son. It smells, yeah. like- it smells like my cat. But, yeah. but he was able to tell, even before I would touch something also, um, she said, what is that face you're making? Because I would see it and I'd be like, and she's like, yeah. what, what is that face? Yeah. And it helped me because you know what it is? It's consciousness. And I think that this is the Reiki tie also going through my stuff consciously. Yeah. Um, I Because I've been living with it so long. I don't think I realized how, how angry some things made me feel or how mm-hmm. sad some things made me feel. And I had just surrounded myself with it. And yeah. so Shanley's sessions, this KonMari process, I think because it's too much. But if you're just going like, we're just looking at clothes, yeah. <laughs> she'd say like, we're, just put that to the side. We're just doing, and yeah. that helped me get through the process. Yeah. And I, it, it's an isolation technique of only dealing with this right now. And so you, you put your blinders on. We're not going to, we're not even going to talk about jewelry or shoes or scarves because the, the number of scarves was a lot, let's just say. First a lot. Yeah. And so there'd be what oh here's another effing scarf. Oh here oh here's another scarf. Oh here's another scarf. They have they were everywhere. And so that's part everywhere. Of the they were everywhere. They were they were everywhere, literally. They, in her car, in her because the idea is when you collect everything from your clothing category, you have to collect it from everywhere. You go to your car, you go to your linen closet, you go to your coat closet, you go to your gym bag, you go to your trunk in your clo- you know your guest bedroom closet, you go to your storage room, you go everywhere. You empty all of your dressers, and the idea behind. Um, starting a category is going all in in one session if you can and if you can't then we make sure that you have a different place to sleep <laughs> to start with <laughs> yeah but the idea is the overwhelm you're supposed to be overwhelmed because the idea is that you're supposed to understand quantity of what you have and that's supposed to help you realize I don't need all of this. I really don't need all of this. You know what else I just realized as you were talking is that I had so much of me scattered everywhere. Of course I feel scattered and just untethered. Um, Since we have done this work, I feel so much more grounded. I mean, thank God I had Reiki before, but yeah. it's like, because I know where things are and I'm not all, I'm not in my car and over here and over there and oh, another scarf. I mean, that literally was my life. And so it has, it has helped me so much. <laughs> because it, because it puts boundaries on things. Now you're storing like with like all of the scarves are in one place. They're no longer in five different places. They're in one place in one drawer in her bedroom. That's it. If she needs a scarf, she goes there. When she takes the scarf off, she puts it back there. And so that's part of the tenant of storing like with like, so that that way there's no, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, you're you're going to follow this process forever. Recidivism—that's the word I'm looking for. Yeah, no, um, yeah. 
So the, the I, idea I here is buy any scarves. I'll tell you, I don't need any scarves. I have scarves right. I could ever want. And, and I have the ones I love. That's right. And the ones that you've kept are the ones that look best with your skin color, which is part of what I do as a certified personal stylist. I help you pick the best That's colors right. for you and 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 not for somebody else. And if you if I can help you hold up two things to your face, let's just say, you know, I'm just grabbing two things in my room. Both of these things, one thing looks good with my face and the other one really doesn't. I'm not, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. So the idea here though, is if I can get you to visually see that something looks good on you and something else doesn't, you're gonna be more open to letting it go and let somebody else be happy with it because that color looks good on her, but not me. Yeah, and you know so what else? Uh, about breaking down the barriers is, is what it is and helping you feel open to letting things go. If someone is, if, if you're, if you're watching, you're listening, <clears throat> and if you have any questions, please type them over there. Diane, thank you, and Margo, thanks if you're still here. Um, but you can type a question over there. But if you're listening, I would say <laughs> because I, I think like my friend was like, "Gosh, you know, um, you're going to spend all that money." But you know what? I am going to more than pay for Shanley services in what I am not spending. I I used to spend money on things. Um, I mean, I don't need it. I don't need scarves. And if I do, like you're saying, like the recidivism, I'm not going to go back into like, oh, I think I'd like to have this. I'd like to have that. I know what looks good on me now. And um, I'm going to only purchase something if I really need it. Yeah. And I really love it. And if and, and I'm also going to have you said that one in one out, you know, I'll have to make room for it because I'll have to live in this little space. And if that's it doesn't. Right. then So that's. That's going to save me a lot of money. <laughs> right. Because let's see. And, and I have, let's just confirm for everybody, Karen, I have permission to comment on our session. Yes, today, right. Okay. So yeah. let's just talk about Epsom, Epsom salts and the number of Epsom salts. That <laughs> Found well, throughout, I throughout it. your home, throughout your whole home. They were everywhere. Yeah. I have about 20 pounds of Epsom salts. Yeah. I had it. Well, because I couldn't find it. You know, I don't know if you That's do right. this. Um, I'm like, oh, where's that? And I'm like, shh, I guess I'll buy some. Yes. So I had, it's like, yeah. like, enough to, like, give an elephant an Epsom salt bath. I'm not it's kidding. Oh, I'm the question. Do your clients need time to process and integrate energetic shifts between sessions? Karen, I'm going to let you answer that. I did. I did. Um, but, you know, yeah, in fact, I would be exhausted after a session absolutely exhausted yeah. to the point where like, I don't know, can I do this? And it kind of goes like this. And I don't know, Shanley, you can tell me your other clients. It's like, uh, I just would feel like I cannot lift a finger. I'm just, uh. and then there was like, uh, well, it's like a Phoenix, I guess, literally mm -hmm. like I would realize like, Oh God, that's gone. And then yeah. it's like, I could take a deeper breath. So it is like an, it's integrating. Yeah, Margo, that's a good way to put it. It's integrating that energetic shift of like almost like that. Oh, like when I dropped off the the photo I mentioned in our clubhouse talk, yes. I, I dropped off this huge portrait of myself and I, I got in the car and I cried. Yes. And then I was like, I felt like a balloon, you know, that you had just released it into the sky. I felt so much lighter. And that's, but each session, um, yeah, I'd get to the end and I'd think, I don't think I can do this tomorrow. Maybe I should just cancel for tomorrow. But I did my homework too. Yeah. Because I was really energized after I got past the, oh, boy, wasn't that a shit show? <laughs> <laughs> and there's crying. There's always crying. Like I mentioned this on Clubhouse. There's not a single client who hasn't cried. And that's totally normal. I'm trained in how to deal with that. But the idea here is that you do, you go through waves. I mean, it's absolutely going to get worse before you get better. So think about the idea of your closet and your dresser now being completely empty. And Karen, she turned around and she's like, oh my God, my closet looks amazing now. And I'm like, turn around and look at your bed. <laughs> oh, shoot. I got to deal with all that now. But the idea is when you put it back into your closet, there's half or a third or a quarter of what you had there before because you were keeping things that don't move you towards your goal. You're keeping things from high school. And that's okay. If it still fits you or it's sentimental and it makes you happy, great. That's awesome. But let's put it in a different place because now it's a sentimental item and doesn't need to be in your active closet. 
Can you speak to all the pictures, albums, music, and what to do with all these? That's a great question, Diane. So I think um, what we're gonna do is we're, we're trying to keep these sessions short. And Diane, what I'm gonna invite you to do is come back in two sessions because that's the, what the whole category is. We're gonna talk about books and paper. And that's essentially what you're asking about. Although really that's a kimono. Those are kimono questions. Well, so pictures are kind of sentimental. And they're sentimental as well, absolutely. And so Diane, the, the easiest way to answer that question is if you go through your categories, like let's just say you have photo albums in your closet, most people do, or you have photo albums somewhere else, your, your hall closet. Start gathering all of those things in one place. So Karen had ended up with three big, huge plastic tubs full of photos, photo albums, anything related to photos. And so now what is happening is you're corralling all of those things into one place so that when we get to kimono and sentimental, you'll be able to deal with them all at the same time. I'm glad she asked that because mm -hmm. that that's what happened in my head was I would just look around and go like, uh, do do? where do I start? Over where do I start? And mm -hmm. yeah, and so we're obviously I'm still not finished, but that's yeah. what that's all I have. I okay, it's three huge tubs of photos, but yeah, I can look and say okay, but, but I can go through those, and I already have a system to sort them so that I can figure out what to do with them. I'm going to put them into albums eventually, but um. By by putting it to, putting it off like when I'd find one and burst into tears like oh this is my stepmother she's dead so she put it over there that goes in cinnamon okay okay I'll put it over here and then we'll deal with it later yeah. and then but because I, then I could keep moving forward mm -hmm. like and she and she wasn't you know she'd let me process that yeah. but knowing that I had a process and well that I had somebody there that I trusted with me I think that's the biggest thing uh, because yeah. I just couldn't I couldn't be alone with all those memories. Well, and that's hard. And so holding a safe place is a large part of what I do. There are long parts of our sessions together where I'm just quiet and, and that's OK. And, and mostly for a lot of with Karen, that's because she's a talker. She processes auditorially and that's OK. There's different ways and different different type different ways of dealing with different types of clients. And Karen's process is to speak. And that's OK. Or sing, which is often <laughs> fun because then she'll start a song and I'll go to the Web page okay. and I'll get YouTube the song and then we'll sing it together. And then we'll, we'll, do, we'll do a dance party, you know, and you can call me out <laughs> Um, you can leave your hat oh, off. What, what the one that you did. can leave? Yeah. This is oftentimes <laughs> during one of our sessions. We'll just sort of break out into song and dance, and then we'll move on. And so, Shanley, does Reiki assist? Absolutely, Reiki assist me with this work because when Karen is having those moments, what I do is I hold that safe space for her, and I'll just turn on the Reiki because I'm, I'm level three, so I can do distance Reiki. And so I'll just immediately pop that Reiki energy right back out to her. Um, mm -hmm. and, and of course I always ask. Um, and, but in this, in this, in this love fest right here, um, Karen has allowed me to do right. distance Reiki on her. Um, and, and I feel so, it. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I know that I can <sighs> take that time to, to grieve. A lot of it's been grieving that I've, I didn't have time to because I was a single mom. It's like, I don't have time to deal with this. You know, I'll do this later. That has been my life story. Well, <laughs> this is later. And so she. Yeah. Um, carte blanche for the Reiki. Yeah, carte blanche for the Reiki. And, Give me all uh, Reiki. <laughs> so I'll just sit there and like, okay. Um, you know, and I think it's the Reiki also because before I started this whole thing, I, I set the intention with my Reiki, like Absolutely. for, for my, for, for healing for my greatest good help me and so i know that when i start feeling those emotions i let those come up and shanley just she's giving me reiki and because i'm not giving myself reiki um i'm i'm letting the reiki work and and pull up all that stuff that needs to so <laughs> and I, I guess i'm going to hear you in my head for the rest of my life shanley thank you and goodbye You're like thank you even for the painful memories thank you mm -hmm. for what you taught me and goodbye i'm ready to let you go now yeah. So the, the Tom Murray and Reiki really work together well, I think. Yeah. And so to answer, to move on to that, even just take it that one more level, Diane, you were asking about, um, I'm sorry, Margo, you were asking about time to process. Sometimes we, so uh, we like to schedule three or four s sessions in a row just to keep it on the schedule. Okay. Just to keep you motivated. But sometimes one of us wasn't ready emotionally or available energetically. And so we would cancel the session. 
and that's okay. We, we, I, I am absolutely not going to force you to do a session if you're not energetically ready to do it because there's, it's not going to work. You all know that when you go to school or work or whatever, and you're not interested in being there, your, your productivity level is in the, in the bin. Um, so there are multiple times where for either one of us, we canceled a session. I had a um, very frustrating tax day the other day and we both popped on to start the session. And I said, we're not having this session. <laughs> <laughs> but there have been times where Karen will text me in advance and um, she'll say, I just, I can't do it today. And I'll say, okay, great. So that's a huge part of it is that I am also tuned into the energy associated with our sessions. And so is Karen, because we're both masters at this. And so Margot and, and Diane, you're both asking a lot about that. And that's huge. It serves the session so well to have the right energy. And actually both of us um, do our power symbols in the room, in, in both of our rooms. And um, we'll start all of our, our sessions with a little bit of, um, what is it called? Um, gotcha. Um, gotcha. Setting our attention. Yeah. Right. Setting our attentions for the day for it to um, serve us in the most powerful and successful and, and um, move this this forward in, in the best way forward for all of us. And I, I always wear my oils. Um, I'll do my, you know, my white. Yeah. white um, and so I, because we're both empaths, I actually visualize. I put my joy, I put my joy on my heart before we start. Today I'm doing highest potential and motivation. Um, for these sessions so that we can make sure that we bring everything that needs to be done into these sessions. Um, but the idea here is it's all energetically related and it has to move forward. So I'm also wearing my stress away on my little nose um, diffuser um, because answering people's questions is so specific to them. They want to know about them and it, and, and every um, Kamari tidying festival is unique to you. So you can resonate with what Karen is saying, but then we're going to focus it even, we're going to funnel it even more to your specific goal. Yeah. I just, I remember too, when you were talking, there were a couple of sessions where I popped on and I think I was like, ah, blah, 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 and you, but you, you said, you, you, we don't have to do this today. How are you feeling? And she started, I could tell she started with the Reiki and I'm like, no, no, um, I, I can do this. Yeah. And then, and I'd be singing. Yeah. yeah, and that's part of it too, is the ups and downs, the, heb the ebbs and the flows. And that's my job is to push you just that little bit more. And Karen, you've commented on that multiple times. Mm -hmm. It's been, yeah, just, just enough. <laughs> well, just you keep enough. telling me, I'd say, Shanley, I'm so tired. Because yeah. I complain a lot. <laughs> and I'm very dramatic. And I'm like, oh, I'm so tired. Oh my God, how am I going to go on? <laughs> and, Part of the fun of Karen. <laughs> <laughs> and she would say, well, because I felt, oh, uh, well, it, it's pulling up all that stuff. You know, yeah. I, I'm hearing, I don't know, you're like, well, you should be able to do this. Blah, 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 blah. And, and she would say something like, you, um, you just made, a, you just made a, a paper, for example. You made, so, yeah, <laughs> she would tell me like, don't say should. Yeah, say I could. Um, We're not going to shoot on ourselves. We're going to yeah, shoot on yourself. And yeah. um, she's like, you you just made so many decisions. And that's what it is. It's decision fatigue. Yeah, it is decision fatigue. fatigue. I'm sorry. I thought, Diane, you were saying you were leaving. But have Di Diane have oh. you call either one of us. We're, we're happy to help out. <laughs> for Reiki or for um, <laughs> the, the decision fatigue is huge. Because here's the thing. When you pick up these two items, that's two decisions. But when you pick up a file folder, when you pick up all of this paper, that's 20 decisions. And each one of those is something that you have to think about. I can just sit here quietly and hold the space for you. But making a decision about each and every single one of those pieces of paper is exhausting. And especially because you can't just pick up the whole thing and toss it. You have to look at every single item. And that's why some of the categories are easier than others. Clothing theoretically easier than others books because again this is just one decision you don't have to go through every single page like you do right some but you know what else longer for that reason what else was really helpful um is that shanley would um as i was like oh do i need to keep this and she would like just a second 
It's like, okay, uh, according to most tax professionals, you should keep your taxes for blah, 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 blah. Or I'm like, what is this? Is this worth anything? And then she, I'd hear, hmm, do you know you can find one of those on eBay for like $40? Maybe you should sell that. You know, yeah. I mean, she would just, uh, uh, it was just so, Resource. so helpful. Resource, Resource provider is what I do. It, so that's the idea here is you're here to make the hard decisions. I'm here to help you with resources and provide you with opportunities that are going to help you move forward towards your goal. And that makes a big difference because yeah. otherwise if I had to stop and say, I don't know, is this worth anything? I, I would, I'd be squirrel. I mean, I would never finish. Yeah. And so okay. right, now we have, right now we have one box full of all of the silver that we collected from her entire home everywhere in all the spaces. Mm -hmm. It's in one box. She's going to take that to a guy who buys silver and she's going to make some money off of it because she doesn't yeah. want any of it. So what, number one, where are we holding it in your home when you don't want it? Number two, let's try and make some money off of it. And if he doesn't want it or he's not going to buy any of it. Thank you. And goodbye. It. Thank you. And goodbye. Yeah. yeah. I guess we should close this up. But um, so next week. Yeah. Next week we are going, uh, I'm going to be one day out of my second vaccine. So I hope I'm going to be like, Oh, my perky so self. let's just hope we're everybody send Karen Reiki for a positive yeah, gonna, vaccine okay. experience because my husband was sick for 48 hours after his second one. So I started, I started sending Reiki to it in the future. As soon as I now, found out the day. Yeah. Well, I'm sure. I'm now. Positive but, and outcome of that situation. But if we but have Shanley to, will, we will. Yeah. But Shanley will be talking most of the, the talk. So I just got to pop on here and yeah. um, cause we're going to talk about um, clothing. clothing. Yeah, so the first category, which is clothing. And we'll go through some specifics about how to make decisions about clothes. We'll go through, um, things that I can do as a personal stylist to help you. We talked a little bit about that already, but the idea here is that it's um, there's a whole category just to talk about with that. And it's we're so going to you have so many tips and tricks. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, and we're going to try and keep them to just 20 minutes. That way, you don't have to be here for Epa, even though we love you and we like your questions. That's right. Yep. Okay. If you right, have well, questions for any of the categories, drop them into the Facebook Live. And we're neither one of us is on Facebook right now checking because it does that huge echo thing. Um, but it's we will look into the discussion. So if in the discussion thread. So if you have any questions, one of us will answer them. We'll also be posting this video on my YouTube channel, which will link. And if you were to subscribe, I would be so happy about that. Thank you. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And if you're catching this on the replay, just post your questions and we will get back to you. Thank you for Bye. being here, Margo and Diane and anybody else that we're just not seeing right now. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.